How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'll be showing you how to build your own custom input element using web components in native JavaScript, all right? So this here is what we're gonna be building in this video. Now we can see that it looks quite nice. So we're gonna be using CSS to of course style it up all within the component itself but also you're able to add your own custom properties and attributes to this element. As an example, I've already selected this one in the JavaScript, so I can say my input dot error equal to, and I can change the error state programmatically like this. I'll press enter and we get that new state, okay? You can clear this using a value of null just like this. And you can also do the same thing for the value of the input field itself. And inside the elements here, we can see this is what it actually looks like when you're using it in your own code. Custom input, type of text, it's gonna support all of this stuff. So let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. So going inside VS Code here, I've got a couple of starting files, but they're all empty, okay? So uh, create this file structure here, where you have an index.html, an index.js file, this is your starting point in the JavaScript, as well as a folder called components with a custom input.js and a custom input.css. So you can pause the video now and create this file structure. And in order to include your JavaScript file in the HTML, we're gonna be using a script type of module with a source pointing to index.js. A type of module is needed here because we want to use the import export syntax. Okay, now speaking of that, let's go inside the custom input.js file and begin by creating our class representing the web component. We're gonna say here, export class custom input extends HTML elements, okay? If you wanna build components like this, you must extend HTML element as well as calling the super method from within inside the constructor. So we'll do that right now. Alongside this, we're gonna be using a shadow DOM to create our own HTML markup for what goes inside our component, of course, being an input field and also a paragraph field for the error message. So let's say this.attach shadow. And like I said, this here is gonna let us have our own custom HTML. We'll say mode of open here, very important. And there we go. So now we're gonna hop down here and say this.shadowroot.innerHTML is equal to, then using the back ticks near the one on your keyboard to activate template strings and multi-line strings here, we're going to first include our CSS file. So we'll say here, input rel of style sheets as per usual, href, okay, going to uh, components forward slash custom input dot CSS. Okay, so what's happening here is basically we're using a root relative link here. So forward slash components, then custom input dot CSS to of course include this CSS file for usage inside our uh, input component. Okay, let's make this a link, not an input, my mistake. There we go. Let's say input with a type of text and a placeholder of something such as username, just as an example here. I'll save this and then go inside the index.js file actually. So we first uh, need to import and register our custom element. So this one right here, before we can start using it. So let's say import here. We're gonna be importing from uh, the dot forward slash components and custom input.js file, okay? And this here is gonna grab onto uh, the custom input class, which we just created. And now we can just say uh, custom elements dot define custom dash input. This is your tag name for the web component. And we're gonna be providing here the class itself. So a reference to the class. Now we can start using this tag in the HTML. At the moment, our input only contains a simple input. Back inside here now, we can say custom-input just like this, and we should get a result on the screen. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and we do indeed get that input field. So if we inspect the elements here, we can see that this tag is our host. So it's our container for the web component. And within that, we've got, in the shadow root, we've got a link script, so our 
CSS file and also the input field itself. The reason why this is a container is because we also want the error message paragraph tag as well. So our component is not just an input field, it's also a paragraph tag in the case of error messages. So this is your container. The equivalent might be a div called input container or something along those lines if you weren't using a web component. Going back inside here, we want to ideally say something such as custom input with a type of text or maybe even password or number or email. You may want to switch up those types there, but also a placeholder. You might want to say placeholder equal to something such as enter your username, dot, 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 whatever it might be, right? So we now need to grab onto these values and use it when we're building up the shadow root, which means up here, we can make two constants, one for the type equal to this dot get attribute. We're gonna grab onto the type attribute. If none was provided by the HTML code, we can default to text. Let's do the same thing for placeholder, just like this. Placeholder also is gonna have a default, this time an empty string. There we go. So now we can use our, uh, our string injection here. So we can just say using uh, a curly, sorry, a dollar sign and the curly braces, we can put an expression inside here. We're gonna say type to inject that one. And the same goes for the placeholder. And it's gonna look something such, uh, such as that. So we can save this, go back in the browser and we get enter your username and the type of text has been uh, forwarded onto the input field. Let's prove this real quick by changing this to be a password as an example. Save this, go back in here, start typing and it's a password. So we are forwarding on those attributes into the building of the HTML. Going inside the CSS, we're gonna actually target the host first. So what does host mean in the context of these web components? Well, it refers to our main container, this one right here. Now remember that if you were to, in your main HTML page, if you were to start adding CSS to your web component, for example, you wanna make the width to be 500 pixels or something such as that, that would apply to your custom input host container and not the input field itself. So this means within here, we can set a default width of 250 as an example, okay? And a display of inline block and a font size of 14 pixels, right? This here is all the default styles that applies to your container. Remember, you need to think about this as being a simple div around your input field, okay? With that being said, this means the input field itself is gonna need a width of 100%. This input field must take up the full width of the container. Going back to the input now, notice we don't need to have any class name here because we're all inside the context of the component so we can target the input field directly. Once we're inside here, we're gonna add a few properties. Let's begin with that width, 100% of the container. Save this back in the browser and if I refresh here, we get a 250 pixel uh, container and the input field is taken up all of the width there. There is some padding, so let's fix that. A overall padding of uh, 0.75 EM or 75% of the current 14 pixel font size. Save back in the browser and there we go. It's looking really nice now uh, after refreshing and there we go. So. That is where we're currently at. We have the container styled and some of the input field. Update the font size to be 1EM, a, a dark gray color here, uh, no border and no outline. We're gonna be changing this to have a box shadow instead. So we'll say box shadow for 005 pixel RGBA 000 and 0.1 for a 10% opaque black and a border radius here of five pixels. Save this back in the browser and we get this here. Uh, so we're gonna say here, uh, input, and we're gonna say focus on focus. We'll copy this here 
and make it a 30% opaque black as opposed to 10%, so 0.3 here, as well as a transition on the input field to say box shadow at 0.25 seconds. Save this back in the browser, refresh, click on this, and we get that nice transition when focusing on the input field. Let's focus on error state, all right? How is this gonna work? Well, we need to have a paragraph inside our web component. So we'll say here a new P tag with a class of error dash message. And then we're gonna need a setter for the error. We'll say set error. Let's grab onto that value. What is this doing? Well, this code here, this function is gonna run whenever we say our input dot error equal to. So this here is a custom setter. I've got a video dedicated to these if you're interested, but if not, just follow along and it should make sense, okay? From this set error, whatever you pass in, so for example, in my original uh, you know, uh, demonstration here, this dot error, this string is what the value is gonna be. Let's first trim that off, if it is a string, okay? So we'll say here, const error message equal to, if the type of the value is a string, we're gonna say val.trim, otherwise null. Once we have that error message, what are we gonna do? We're gonna be updating these elements. The first thing is to update the input field to have an error state class. We'll say this.shadowroot.query selector. Remember, shadow root refers to our own encapsulated uh, DOM within the component, which means we can access things such as query selector, just like the document, right? Query selector input, okay? Dot class list, dot toggle. Let's toggle the has error class based on if a error message was provided. So we can say boolean, treat this error message as a boolean, okay? It'll give us true or false, in other words, if a string was provided and it's truthy, if it's got a value, right, then this will be equal to true, which means we add that has error. If we don't provide a string or if it's empty, whatever it might be, then it's gonna be false. We're gonna say, once again, this shadow root query selector, this time selecting the class of error dash message being the P tag, will say text content equal to the error message itself. So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna test this code out. Let's go into the elements tab and select the custom input. If you didn't know, you can say dollar sign zero to access the currently selected element in the console. This would be the equivalent of saying document.querySelector and selecting the field directly. So we're gonna say dollar sign zero dot error is equal to custom error. Press enter and we get that right there. Our message appears in the paragraph tag and also if we inspect this, we can see that we have that class of has error on the input field itself. So with that being said, let's go inside the CSS and add some more CSS for these new states. What are we gonna do? Input dot has error. When the input field has an error, we're gonna add a border, two pixel solid red. For the error message uh, paragraph tag, a color, of red and a white space of no wrap in the case where the message is too long and it's gonna extend past the container. Uh, you can add that in if you like, up to you. Save this, go back in the browser, refresh. We're gonna be selecting that again and uh, adding the error and there we go. There are a few more things to do. Uh, one of them is gonna be to add or insert a value to the input field, okay? So to achieve this, we're gonna first be, uh, be creating a getter for the value. So when you say input field dot get, sorry, dot value, this here is gonna run. We're gonna return simply just the input field's value itself. So this dot shadow root dot query selector input dot value, okay? So let's test this one out. Back in the browser, refresh. Uh, we're gonna say decode here. Uh, and, and, and then we're gonna say dollar sign dot value and we get decode right there. So our getter is running and we're getting that value and we're just forwarding on the input field itself uh, from there. So what's next? Well, we can say set value. 
I want to set the value now. And for this one, it's going to be, again, quite straightforward. This time, we're going to be setting that input value equal to the value which the user passes in through that. Okay, let's change the type back to text so we can actually see what's going on here. I'll save this, go back in the browser. We can now say $0.0.value is equal to and make it something such as water, press enter, and it changes that value. Let's try and retrieve it now and the same thing works both ways. Fantastic. Now, the very last thing to do is going to be to accept both the value and the uh, and the error message when it first gets rendered. And this is similar to what you can do with a standard input field. So we want to say custom input value equal to decode by default and also an error equal to, let's say, wrong username. So uh, save this, go back in the browser, refresh. We don't get those attributes being used. It's going to be quite straightforward, guys. Go back inside here. In the constructor, we're just going to say, well, this dot value is equal to this dot get attribute and grab onto the value attribute when they first get created, right? And the same thing goes for the error because dot value and dot error, they're calling the setters down here. So all this stuff is going to be happening when you set those values. Save this back in the browser and we get that default state right off the bat. So that is how to build your own uh, custom input element using web components. If this video helped you out or you learned something, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.